Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Emerson and I love helping teachers with all things technology, organization, and productivity. I was convinced that I had already recorded a video tutorial on Google Jamboard. Been there, done that. Turns out I was mistaken. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a basic tutorial of Google Jamboard and I'm gonna share some ideas of how you can use it as a teacher. Now, if you have not heard of Google Jamboard and you're wondering what it is, Jamboard is an interactive digital whiteboard. It is a free website and app from Google, and it can be used so many different ways as a teacher or within your classroom. And we're gonna cover that later in this video. Let's start with a few different ways you can get to Google Jamboard. First and foremost, you can open up any browsing tab and in the address bar, you're gonna type jamboard.google.com. That will bring you to the main Google Jamboard screen. If you want to automatically open up a new blank Jamboard, you can actually type in jam.new and it will take you directly there or within your Google Drive, if you click on the new button, come down to more, and then select Google Jamboard, it will open up a blank Jamboard as well. Now we're just gonna go across the top and then down the side, every single button and talk about what it does and why you might use it. Starting with the title, you will notice it is automatically named Untitled Jam, but you have the ability to rename your Jamboard by clicking where the title is and giving it a new name. So example, Jamboard, and then just click the blue OK button. The next thing you will see across the top are these boxes. This is a way to see your different frames. Each frame is like the blank slide on Jamboard. So think of it like PowerPoint or Google Slides. Every slide is like its own page, but on Jamboard, those are called frames. If you click on that middle button, it will actually expand down so you can see like a row of all of your different frames. You can click the plus sign in order to add a new frame, or I'm gonna close this expanded view. If I click the next frame button, it will automatically create a new frame. Now Jamboard does limit you to 20 frames per jam. So if I keep clicking and I get to 20, it's not gonna let me continue to click. It's going to automatically cut me off. Now I'm gonna click and expand that frame view again. Next to a frame, you'll see these three dots. That will give you the option to duplicate a frame. So it will make an exact copy of an existing frame and everything that's on it. And you also have the ability to delete a frame. You can also click and drag in order to reorder any of the frames you have already created. Next, you will see the blue present button. It looks like a box with an arrow in it. This will allow you to actually present your Jamboard within Google Meet. So if you happen to be teaching students virtually, you have that option option to share it virtually within the meeting. Next, you will see the three dots, which is the more actions button. This is where you also have the ability to rename your Jamboard, but I showed you another way to do that as well. You can also download your Jamboard as a PDF. This will take each frame and save it as an individual page within a PDF document. You also can save each individual frame as an image. You would have to repeat this process for each different frame that you want to save, but but you have the ability to take just that one frame and save it as a picture. The remove button is just going to delete your Jamboard. Make a copy is going to duplicate the entire Jamboard as a new file within your Google Drive. And then you have your typical get help, send feedback to Google and see version history. So you can go back and be able to restore previous versions of your Google Jamboard. Next, you will see the blue share button. This works the same way as a Google Doc or Google Sheets or Google Slides. You can individually add people to be able to edit or view the Jamboard. You also can get a link and you can give anyone with that link view access or edit access. We're gonna come back to that a little bit later when we talk about using Google Jamboard with your students. Now we're gonna move to that top toolbar that is right underneath. The first two buttons you will see are undo and redo. Those come in handy. I always make sure I teach my students how to use those buttons as well. You also have a zoom button so you can zoom in or out depending on how you are using Jamboard at that moment. Next is the set background button. Now this is super important within Jamboard because it allows you to customize the Jamboard and use it in a lot of different ways. Once you click on the set background button, you will see there are pre-made backgrounds like dots, lines, grids, and then different solid 
colors, but you also have the ability to insert an image. This is where you can actually create your own templates and insert it into the Jamboard. So I'm gonna show you an example. I'm gonna click on the image button. I can upload it from within my computer files. I can upload it within Google Drive, or I can even do a Google search and pull an image from Google. I'm gonna go ahead and browse my files. And I'm gonna use this four corners template that I actually have available for you as a freebie. I'm gonna click open and you will notice that it automatically places that image in the background. I mentioned that this was a freebie I have for you. So if you use the link in the description box, you can have a set of free Google Jamboard templates that are already made and ready to go sent to your email inbox. So if you are interested, make sure you check it out. And the last button in that top toolbar is the clear frame button. This is gonna clear off any drawing text boxes, sticky notes, or images that you have placed on top of the Jamboard, but it is not going to clear the background. So for example, I'm gonna come over to the pen tool and I'm just gonna scribble. Now when I click clear frame, that scribble disappears, but the background is still intact. If I want that background to be taken off, I'd have to go back to set background, and then I would choose that default, which will bring it back to white. Now I will say one limitation of Google Jamboard is that you are not able to actually customize the size of the frame, at least at this point. Maybe that is something that will become available in the future, but it is a set presentation 16 to nine ratio size and you're not able to customize it. Now, finally, we're gonna take a look at the side toolbar. These are all of your various editing tools in order to use the whiteboard. So we're gonna start with the pen tool. You will notice if I actually click on it, I have a few different options. I can use a pen, a marker, a highlighter, or a brush. Those are just going to appear different on the screen and have different levels of opacity. We also have some different color options. So I have black, blue, green, white, yellow, and red. At this point, you are not able to customize the color, but again, maybe that is a feature that will be added in the future. Now, the pen works just like you expect it would. You're able to draw right on the screen. This is great if students are using Chromebooks or other devices that have a touch screen because they can actually use their finger directly on the screen in order to draw. Underneath of the pen tool is the eraser and it works just like an eraser. One downside is that you do have to erase it piece by piece so if you miss a little spot you have to go back and get it it's not like you can click and it will erase that entire stroke you do have to go in and manually erase it underneath of the eraser tool is just the arrow this is like your general select button this is what you would want to have if you're trying to move things around or manipulate items within the Jamboard under that is the sticky note, which I absolutely love the sticky notes, so do my students. This allows you to add text and you will notice as I start typing, the blue bar at the bottom grows. This is showing you how much space you have left on the sticky note because it is capped at a certain number of characters. You also are able to customize the color of the sticky note using the options up at the top, or you can have it be clear by choosing the transparent option. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as yellow and click save. Now I'm gonna click cancel. Once I have the sticky note on my screen, I'm able to do a few different things. I can actually rotate it up here in the corner by clicking and dragging. I also can resize the sticky note using any of those dots in the corners. And if I click the three dots, I have the option to go back and edit the sticky note. I can duplicate the sticky note, so that will make an exact copy, or I can delete the sticky note or order it on the screen. So this is just like things on PowerPoint or Google Slides where you can edit the order and what's overlapping and what's showing in front versus being in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this extra one and then I'm just gonna drag it over here for now. The next button is an image button. If I click on that, just like when I set my background, I have the ability to insert an image from my computer within my Google Drive or do a Google search. So this is a great way for students to be able to demonstrate their understanding in a variety of ways because not only can they draw or use text, but they also can insert images. I'm gonna go ahead and just close out of this for now. The next button is the shape tool. Just like with the pen tool, I do have various options. So if I click on it, 
I can choose between different shapes that are available and you will notice up at the top in that top toolbar, I now have an outline color option and a fill color option. So let's say I want a circle that has a black outline and maybe a blue fill. I'm gonna choose those options and then I can click and drag in order to make that shape. Once I have created the shape, I can resize it or rotate it just like I can with the sticky note. And then if I click those dots, I have the same options to be able to duplicate it, delete it, change the order, just like with the sticky note. The next option on the side toolbar is a text box. So I'm gonna click up here in this top box and you will notice once again, I have some more options in the top toolbar. Within the style, I'm only really able to change like the overall appearance and the size. I'm not able to customize the font, at least at this time. I'm gonna keep it at normal. I can change the font color and I can change how it is aligned. So this is an example of directions. Once I have typed, I can resize that text box by dragging it out or using those corner pieces and that will actually change the entire size of the text. If I click those three dots, I can go back and edit, duplicate, delete it, or change the order. So just to quickly show you how you might use this free template that I have available for you, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the frame and up at the top, I'm going to put some directions using a text box. So my directions might say, what do you think the theme of the story is and why? So I'm gonna resize it so that it fits within this box. Okay. Now I'm going to insert more text boxes for each of the different themes. So maybe compassion. This is four corners, just like you would do in your classroom. So instead of having students physically get up and move to the different corners of the room, maybe with COVID, you're not able to do that. So this would be a digital option. I can actually duplicate this box since it's already kind of the size that I need. Maybe loyalty, I'm gonna duplicate it again. I can also use my keyboard shortcuts. So on a PC, that would be Control D in order to duplicate, or on a Mac, it would be Command D. Maybe honesty, and then my last one could be perseverance. So I have my four corners on, I have them labeled. The space underneath is gonna be where my students add their text boxes or their sticky notes. My students always love using the sticky notes. In order to actually share this with my students, I would go up to the share settings. Rather than adding them all individually, unless I'm working with a small group, my entire class that would take too long. So I would actually just use the link. So right now I have it as anyone with the link can view, but I want to give my students edit access. So I would change this to editor and then I would copy the link and post it on our LMS or maybe shorten the URL and display it up on the board for my students or I could send it to them another way that I have availability to do within my district. Then my students will be able to come on and they could add sticky notes. And I would always encourage my students to add like their name to the sticky note or their initials, some way for me to be able to identify them. And that's another good tip I have for you. Make sure you set expectations for using Jamboard. So a couple of expectations I would have is with their sticky note, they can change the size of their sticky note and move it around, but only theirs. They cannot manipulate anyone else's sticky note. I also do not have them use the laser pointer, which I don't think I mentioned that before, but under the text box is the laser pointer. This allows you to like circle things and then it disappears. Well, my students love to take the laser pointer and just draw all over the screen. So one of my expectations was no laser pointer. If your students are getting a little crazy, they're not following directions, at any time you can go up to the share button, go to that link, and change it back from editor to viewer and they will no longer be able to click any of the buttons. They can still see the Jamboard, but that's it. So keep in mind, you do still have control at any time. You can turn off their edit access, re-go over your expectations and directions, and then give them edit access once they are behaving. But if I go back to editor access, let's say my students are adding sticky notes, so they're gonna do their initials or their name, and they would say, I think this is the theme because, they would give their explanation, click save, and then they could move their sticky notes on the screen. I would always encourage them to like shrink their sticky notes down so we can fit them all. But then as we're having a discussion as a class, you can take the sticky note and make it larger in order to read it. And then you can just shrink it back down afterward.
Now, I wanna share a few different ideas for actually using Jamboard as a teacher and with your students. I feel like there are three main kind of umbrella categories for ways to use Jamboard. Obviously, there are a lot of other options, but these are the main ways that I found myself using it. Number one would be teacher modeling. Number two would be collaboration. And then number three would be individual student work. So let's start by discussing teacher modeling. I love to use Google Jamboard to create like virtual anchor charts or virtual versions of our notes or be able just to model problems, especially in math. So let's take a look at this example. I have kind of this basic template for rounding on a number line. This could be something that I display in my classroom, like using a projector, or I'm sharing to a Google Meet with my students, and I'm gonna give my students just view access. I'm not gonna give them edit access, but that way, if they wanted to, they could actually have it opened up on their screen, and in real time, as I'm drawing and writing text on the screen, they would be able to see it. So I would go through and just kind of complete this with them. So I might use the text box, maybe the number is 346. And if I'm doing notes like this, I usually like to make it red so that it really stands out. I can duplicate that text box. Let's say we are rounding to the tens place. And then I would go through all of the different steps. So I would talk through how to create my endpoints. So this one would be 340, and then I'd have 350 over here. And again, I can use the pen tool instead of using the actual text boxes. I would create my midpoint, which would be 345. And then maybe I'm gonna use the pen in red, and I'm gonna mark that 346 would be somewhere around here. 346 and I will say when I do this I really like to do it from my iPad because I can use my Apple pencil and it makes it much easier to be able to write but you get the point this is a great way to be able to model for your students and you can share out the link with them afterward on your LMS like Google Classroom. So after I finish creating this anchor chart for my students, I could take the link and post it on Google Classroom, or I can go up to that more actions button and I can either download it as a PDF or save it as an image and have it posted for my students to be able to see or print it out and they could actually put it inside of a notebook. The second way I mentioned that you can use Jamboard is for collaboration. I'm gonna go to the next frame. And this is something I did very often with my students, especially on a Monday morning. I would have them fill out peach and pit. So a peach is something good from their weekend and then a pit is something not so good. This template is actually available in my TPT store. I have a set of 20 different templates that are all collaborative templates. So things you would want your entire class filling out at one time, rather than something that each individual student is gonna fill out on their own. I have it available as just background images that you can insert yourself. I have Google Slides where you can go in and actually type the text up at the top for the directions ahead of time. And I also have them as pre-made Jamboards that look just like this where the sticky notes are already inserted for you. And I also have it available for from 15 students up to 40 students. So if you are interested in grabbing that and have all of those pre-made templates, go ahead and use the link down in the description box. But I mentioned this is something I like to have my students collaborate on. And every Monday morning, I would be able to share this Jamboard with them. They would go on and find their sticky notes. So you notice that these boxes are numbered. Each of my students would have a corresponding number based on alphabetical order for the class. So they would find their sticky note and they would go ahead and edit the text, insert in their peach and pit. And I mentioned before that you can take and you can resize those sticky notes. So when you're trying to read a student's response, you can go ahead and just resize it and that way it makes it easier for you to be able to read. Another way you could use this for students to collaborate is with a very general discussion. So you can post a prompt or directions up at the top and then students would find their sticky note and be able to type in their thoughts and you can easily see all of the students' responses at one time and you can have a great class discussion. So again, for something like this, I'm going to share the link that gives my students edit access versus the anchor chart where I'm only giving them view access. But keep in mind, 
fine if my students start getting crazy and sticky notes are moving all over the screen and the laser pointer is going crazy, I can turn off that edit access at any time and they will instantly only be able to view it and not be able to manipulate anything. This is something that does take practice and it takes work, but if you set those expectations and you constantly reinforce them, your students will learn what is okay and what is not okay when they are using Google Jamboard. The last way I mentioned that you can use Jamboard within your classroom is for individual student work. So I'm gonna go to the next frame. Jamboard is great for having students actually complete assignments independently, especially for math, because they have those variety of tools. They can insert shapes, they could insert images, they can use the pen tool, they can insert text boxes, and they're able to solve the problem in a way that fits their learning style. Now, if you are using this for individual student work, you would want to share the Jamboard on your LMS, such as Google Classroom, in a way that's going to make a copy for every student. I do have a video all about how to use Google Classroom and how to share assignments in a way that will make a copy for each student. So if you are interested, that will be linked for you down in the description box. But each student would have their own version of the same exact Jamboard, and they would be able to use those tools to solve. So for example, if we are practicing the area model for multiplication, what I love is students could actually use the pen so they could write the numbers like so, or if they wanted to, they could actually use sticky notes. So that they could just insert a sticky note that says 30, and then they can drag it over here to the side. They can insert another sticky note that says six. They can drag that to the side. And then within each box, they could add a sticky note or even a text box. So here, 30 times 20 equals 600. But I mentioned that students can insert pictures. So if I go to the image button, you will notice that I have the camera. Now I'm not gonna turn mine on because it might look a little bit weird, but if students prefer to actually solve it using physical manipulatives or solve it on paper rather than their computer, they can do that and then just insert a picture of their work on the Jamboard. So it's very easy for differentiation. You also can use it for drag and drop activities. So let's say I want my students to sort different resources as renewable or non-renewable. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the background for any elements I do not want my students to manipulate. So I don't want them to be able to edit the title or edit the chart, anything like that. But I do want them to be able to click and drag the pictures. So I'm going to add those on top. I'm gonna to come to the image button and under image search, I could search Cole and I will find a picture and insert it. I can then resize it as needed. And maybe I'm gonna put all the images at the top. Maybe I'm also going to have oil and I can insert that picture, okay. And then I'm gonna have a picture of solar power or solar panels insert that. Then when I share this Jamboard with my students, they're gonna be able to move and manipulate those pictures. So they can actually click and drag them in order to complete that sort. So that is it. That is the basic tutorial for how to actually use Google Jamboard, along with some ideas of how you might use it within your classroom. Don't forget, I do have those free templates for you that you can grab down in the description box, as well as the paid version of the sticky note templates with all of the different students, which is also linked in the description box. I hope this video was helpful for you and you got some new ideas. If it was, give the video a thumbs up and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I would love for you to share this video with any of your teacher friends who you think might like it. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.